Hello guys, this is Dave. Um, as you probably know, I uh, designed the Gate Hunter Frame series, and um, a question I often got was, what's the difference between the RS5 and RS6? So the RS series and the SLS5, so the super light version of the Gate Hunter Frame. So this video is to walk you through the difference of the frames, give you some um, build recommendations, especially on the super light version. So um, check out the links below. All the components I talk about are linked in the video description. And um, yeah, let's get right to it. So I have brought for you here an RS5 and the SLS5. So these are two builds I did. If we put them on a scale, Yeah, come on. Let's look at this. So you can see this is 290 grams, this five inch build with um, 2206 Xing motors, which look really nice in my opinion. It's a 6S build. These are 1850 KV. Um, this is, they are extremely fast. Although it's only 2206, um, I can really recommend that. 2206 uh, high KV on 6S, this, this thing handles amazingly. Um, but let's get back to the weight. So here the ultralight version to compare 186 grams. So we have a huge difference of 100 grams between these two builds. And uh, a lot of people are wondering where this comes from. Um, so first differences in the frames, um, they have a pretty similar general layout, um, you know, the, the, the signature gate hunter design with the single bottom plate uh, and the two arms that are linked through a plate, which you can see here, uh, all the gate hunter frames have this single thick bottom plate uh, and the separate arms that are linked by, uh, by a little plate and then the, the signature canopies. Um, but uh, they don't share a single uh, component. It's all different. Uh, it starts with the bottom plate. This is the one of the uh, SLS series. And if we compare this to the R series, it's of course much smaller, uh, a completely different profile because it's just made for 20 by 20 stacks. This is much smaller and lighter. It's also four millimeters, while this one is five millimeters here. Uh, so by kind of downsizing this, uh, it already saves a lot of weight um, for the little 20 by 20 stacks. Uh, the arms. So this is an RS5 arm, um, five millimeters. And here we go with the SLS arm. So as you can see, uh, these designs are kind of different, um, more holes. In the SLS version, it's overall much, much thinner. It's four millimeters instead of five. So different arm design. Uh, that's basically where the much of the weight difference comes from. Uh, also, as you can see, this frame here is just a much smaller footprint. Um, the canopy has a completely different design. You can see it's much smaller than uh, on the RS series because we have these small 20 by 20 stacks in here. Uh, this is an HGLRC, uh, the, the 40, 40 amp version. Um, honestly, I, I kind of forgot exactly the, the name of this, but I link it down below in the video description. Um, and also another thing that says weight, it's the, uh, the VTX. So I designed this to use the, um, the small TVS Nano or Nano 32 VTX. I have a Nano 32 in this one. Um, it does 400 milliwatts, which is more than enough for such a race build. This is pretty amazing, flies without any problem. Uh, something new I have discovered and haven't tried out yet. This is, uh, I think, a copy by HDLRC. This looks very similar to the uh, TVS Nano VTX. I haven't tried it to be honest. Let's open this thing up and take a look at it. So I got this from Banggood. And I mean, the upside is this thing is just a third of the price. It's around 10 euros. Yeah, it's 
just as small as a Nano. Um, I mean, it looks good. It's much cheaper. Maybe it's, uh, it's enough. I will uh, try this out uh, and let you guys know how it performs. Uh, by the way, let's quickly measure this, what size it is. I don't know, I don't really remember what size the Nano is, but I think this is pretty much the same size. So it's 13, 14, roughly 14 by 15. I, mean, I think that's the same uh, same size than the CBS. Also comes with a little linear antenna. So these tiny, um, tiny VTXs are actually what this frame is designed for. Um, another thing is the motors. I mean, these aren't very big motors I have here on my RS5. As I mentioned, it's 2206, but they look huge compared to the 2204s I have on here. And this frame really, you should only use this with 2204. Everything else will basically ruin the build. It's, it's made for 2204. There aren't many motor options for 2204. These X Nova are just, uh, try, let me try to get this in focus. These X Nova are just super beautiful. Um, they are the best 2204 motor in my opinion. Uh, but I'll link a few options down below in the video of motors. These are 2500 kV. Um, so 2500 kV 2204 on 4S, which doesn't sound that impressive. But if you fly this, this thing is insanely fast. Uh, I was completely shocked. This is on par here with the 6S build um, because it just doesn't weigh anything. It's so light, uh, it's insanely fast. Um, the low weight makes it a little bit more difficult to fly in my opinion. I actually prefer this slightly heavier builds. They're just much more forgiving if you fly them on a racetrack and you don't really need that, sh that much speed. Um, but they are a lot of funny slide builds. Another really great upside is um, that you don't stress your batteries that much. I mean, I fly this one mainly with my old, really, really worn down. I mean, I have a dozens of these uh, old 1300 uh, milliamp hour uh, tattoo batteries, 75C. Uh, they are pretty old and used up. Uh, on heavier 4S builds, these really tend to sag a lot. You can really feel that they are old, but on such a light build, it has just a really low amp draw, comparatively. Um, so this is like 50, 60 amps, which is much less than a, than a, for a regular 4S that weighs 100 or 150 grams more. Uh, so this this is the main advantage. Um, what else can I say about the build? Of course, the, the strap here for the battery is a uh, slim. Got it. This from N Factory is a slim 50 millimeter strap. Uh, remember to get one of those that you can fit them. The regular ones are 20 millimeters are a bit too wide to fit here between the stack. Um, the camera, it's a regular Micro Swift 2 micro camera, uh, which I don't like that much. I prefer the CMOS cameras. Uh, on the other hand, the Eagle I have in this one here, the Micro Eagle is, I think, a few grams, like five, six, seven, eight grams heavier than this one. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe swapping uh, its swapping the Swift with uh, the new Rattel, which supposedly has uh, pretty much a video quality that is as good as the one of the Eagle, and it looks pretty cool. Um, so I'll see if I fit this here in the small canopy, because also uh, this one doesn't really fit an Eagle. You could fit one, but Eagle is bigger than a regular Swift camera, so probably it wouldn't really fit. Um, so I will maybe try this one or not, I don't know. But um, I just prefer to have the nice CMOS big sensor quality, even if it makes the quad a few grams heavier. Uh, I'd rather have one that is a bit heavier and just has a nicer, more immersive flight experience. Uh, yeah. So what else do we have? Uh, receiver, 
It's the only thing I didn't explain. Yes, I use a Free Sky XM receiver. This is pretty much the cheapest and smallest receiver that Free Sky has. So if I probably have one left here, I can show you. Yep, this one. Let me unpack one of those and show it to you. This is my favorite receiver for for lights or micro quads. Let's open this up. I mean, the alternative is using Crossfire, which I did on this build. But of course, Crossfire is more expensive. And it's a few grams heavier, especially the Immortal T antenna. Uh, I think for a super light build, it would add a few grams, which is annoying. Um, so I prefer using this XM. It's the XM, not the XM Plus. These are uh, different. Um, the XM is the small version. You can see how super, super tiny this thing is. It just weighs like a gram. Let me, by the way, let me put this on a scale. See what it weighs. Not even a gram, 0.8 grams. It's nothing. Um, compared to the RXSR, which costs around 20 euros, so it's twice as expensive. This just costs 10 bucks on, uh, on Banggood. This just has one antenna uh, and no telemetry. To be honest, I don't need telemetry. It's pretty useless for me. I see everything I need to see in my goggles. Um, and I didn't, for racing, I didn't notice any difference between the receivers that have one or two antennas. If you mount the antenna the right way, I never had a fail safe with the XM show you how I mounted this. So I put the antenna here with a zip tie and sh um, shrink thingy, usual way, just around the frame. If you, if you mount it this way, you won't have, oh, I just showed my address. Uh, <laughs> um, you won't have any reception problems. So that's it. If you have any more questions, uh, leave a comment down below. Um, if you're interested in one of these frames, uh, I sell them through Armiton Productions, make to order. Um, they have pretty amazing quality. It takes a bit longer to ship. Usually Armiton uh, produces within two weeks. Um, then you have to add roughly two weeks more for shipping. So four weeks, which uh, takes a while, but it's really good quality. And to be honest for now, I don't really have time um, to manage an online shop and everything. I'm just doing this on the side and I'm not really making any money off it. So uh, the only downside of Armiton is it takes a little bit longer, but it's really good quality. So if you're interested, um, just get it from Armiton. Or sometimes I have some lying around, uh, shoot me a message. Maybe I can hook you up with one of those frames. So thanks for watching and take care.